This video was brought to you by ChartMogul. ChartMogul automatically generates all the SaaS subscription analytics like MRR, ARR, churn, and more. You need to run your business like a pro. Use ChartMogul to measure, understand, and grow your recurring revenue. Go to churnmogul.com slash slideme to get a $50 a month discount for your first 12 months. Learning a new language can be quite a challenge. It takes time, energy, and a lot of patience. Plus, it can be costly. And one company wanted to change that by making language education free. And it's on its way to the top of the educational tech or ed tech segment. It earned fans and critics alike. Duolingo changed learning for millions of people. Or did it? Let's talk about Duolingo in this episode of Company Forensics. Guatemalan Luis Von An and Swiss Severin Hacker come from vastly different countries, but language was vital for both. In Guatemala, English meant more job opportunities, but learning was expensive. Von An wanted to pass the TOEFL, which was unavailable in Guatemala, so he spent $1,200 traveling to El Salvador only for the test. On the other hand, Hacker grew up surrounded by German, Italian, French, and English in his everyday life in Switzerland. Their passion for languages made them click when they met at Carnegie Mellon University. There, Von Ann was a computer science professor and Hacker, a PhD student. Von Ann was already famous for his ideas. First, he created the CAPTCHA test, those squiggly letters to certify that you're human. He did that and then sold it to Google for millions. Now, Von Ann wanted to solve another problem, teaching languages for free. Millions of people want to learn English, but can't afford it. Again, the challenge was clear and the pair tried killing two birds with one stone. Von An believed crowdsourcing could solve learning a new language. He would take users who wanted to learn a language and have them translate articles. With millions on board, Duolingo would translate articles in no time. But of course, not all users would translate articles. So first, they'd have to learn the basics. Then, as they advanced through the levels, they could translate longer sentences. Plus, they would do it all at no charge because their benefit is learning. But wait, isn't that free work? So why not turn it into a game? Duolingo then became a 100% free language learning site, and people learned by helping translate the web, having fun and earning points along the way. By October 2011, Duolingo had received $3 million in funding, and some of the names there were Tim Ferriss, Ashton Kutcher, and Union Square Ventures. Then, after heavy promotion, the company launched in 2012, offering four languages, French, English, Spanish, and German. By September 2012, the platform already had 250,000 users. 20% of those users came from Latin America and lower income countries. And with such a strong start, investors wanted in. By October, the company had landed $15 million in Series B funding. And with this money, they released a Duolingo app for iOS in 2012 and Android in 2013. And now everybody could learn a language on their phones. And around that time, Von An looked for other sources of income. Again, with crowdsourcing article translation. Only this time, he would charge for the service. The idea was controversial, but investors liked it. Plus, the app kept proving its worth. By June 2013, it had 4 million users, and one month later, a million more. Duolingo kept growing, but how do you make a profit out of those millions of users? Well, the founders thought of two ways to go about it. In 2013, the company launched its own incubator program for new languages. Volunteers could upload entire languages or individual classes. Also, Duolingo offered translation services. For example, users who were native in French, Spanish, and Portuguese translated articles from English as practice. Meanwhile, Duolingo charged outside consumers for these services. The idea was controversial, but both CNN and BuzzFeed used it. Duolingo's funding kept increasing as well, with $20 million in 2014, $45 million in 2015. Now the company had a $470 million valuation and many questions around volunteer work. Few, if any companies, reached this level relying on volunteers. Duolingo had everything going for it. Millions loved the immersive, game-like approach, but the leap from there to monetizing was still distant. In 2015, Duolingo changed its focus. The company tried to capitalize on the millions of users it had, and Von An announced other sources of revenue still centered around education, and they were ambitious. Duolingo launched its version of the TOEFL certification program, the Duolingo English Test, or DET. And for years, the TOEFL was vital for almost everybody who wants to study in the US. And now, an ad tech startup wishes to compete for less? 
These tests have always been expensive. If Duolingo got enough institutions to believe in the test, they could offer the DAT for a mere $20. But money was still short. However, Duolingo's revenue went from $1 million in 2016 to $13 million in 2017. So the company took a significant risk that year. Ads would increase on the free app. So to avoid them, plus having offline access, all you had to do was get Duolingo Plus for $9.99 a month. But the monetization ideas didn't end there. Can you imagine breaking a 52-week Duolingo streak? Well, you no longer had to. Instead, for $4.99, you could ask Duolingo to repair it and keep going. The strategies, though not fan favorites, eventually paid off. By 2018, the DET, for example, had the approval of 180 institutions, including Yale and Columbia. And that same year, the company tripled 2017's income. In 2019, Duolingo had a $30 million funding round, which ballooned the valuation to $1.5 billion, making it one of the few edtech startups to reach unicorn status. By March 2020, Duolingo had a million paying users, and by the end of the year, it was 1.6 million users, according to its S1 filing. But the story isn't perfect. Duolingo has had its share of criticism. Though Duolingo is massive, it still relies heavily on volunteers. In fact, many consider the volunteers' value to be greater than that of its paid employees. But the profit from paid subscriptions all goes to Duolingo. So why keep using them? Then there's the app itself. The Duolingo Owl is excellent and reminding you practice every day. And for many, this is a good thing as it brings discipline, but the owl has gotten more intense. He even cries if you ignore him for too long. Just Google Duolingo memes. But jokes aside, this isn't the most significant criticism. Bonan has said Duolingo is a tool for people to get a job, even a high paying job. He only promises users will get to advanced, beginner, and early intermediate levels. The press loves criticizing Duolingo with many articles claiming it just doesn't work. Language experts have also highlighted that it's too rigid and that it has an impractical vocabulary. Diane Larson Freeman is a linguist who specializes in second language acquisition. And she told Forbes that Duolingo's method is ineffective since there's no conversation with other humans. One Duolingo employee didn't understand a basic question in Spanish. Hablas español. You speak Spanish. After six months of using the app. And then Steve Sacco, a language expert, took 300 hours of Duolingo's Swedish lessons, only to fail a college introductory Swedish exam. And for the DET, critics call it a rudimentary test of exercises unfit for college-level English, let alone how English works in real life. But this did not slow Duolingo down. When in June 2021, Duolingo filed its S1 for an eventual IPO, fans and investors took notice. The S1 filings figures were impressive. By March 2021, the app had 40 million monthly users and 500 million downloads while being the highest grossing education app. Income had increased as 5% of users paid for the premium edition. Even the controversial DET tests, which cost $49 by March 2021, have been a hit with users taking it 344,000 plus times. Revenue for 2020 doubled 2019's figures, reaching $161 million. Yet, Duolingo still hasn't turned a profit. Instead, losses increased from 19 to 2020. And therein lies the challenge. Duolingo started as free and, to a degree, it still is free. That's the reason why millions use it every month. So the company must keep them entertained and make money. And now, you have to entertain investors as well. So in the future, the question is the same in every single language. How? Thanks a lot for watching this one, guys. I actually met Luis von Ahn uh, at a TEDx conference. I was invited to speak back, way back in 2013. I found him to be a great guy with some really, really cool ideas. One of the ideas that really blew my mind back then was how he apologized to everyone for the time that he had made the world waste solving CAPTCHA puzzles. And the evolution of CAPTCHA was kind of reCAPTCHA, where the puzzles stopped being just random letters to figure out you're not a robot, but other ways to realize you're not a robot that could also help in other ways. And that's what we have today with Google. If you look at the reCAPTCHA models today, you're trying to solve little puzzles that are actually useful for something. Right now, they're used by Google's AI for self-driving cars. So if Luis uh, ends up watching the video, uh, I hope you take no offense. I'm a big fan of your company. Have you been thinking about learning Chinese, Spanish, or some other language? Take a pause on that and instead, learn how to read data. As a startup entrepreneur, nothing is more important than understanding your business metrics as our friends from Chernmogul would say. We've been using Chernmogul for over five years to track the performance of our SaaS business. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend you to watch the video that we produced in partnership with them a little bit ago, Customer Churn, How to Save Your Startup. This video dives into what churn is and why it can be deadly for a SaaS business. And we know all that too well. Thankfully, a tool like Chernmogul can save your business by providing you with incredibly valuable insights about customer churn so that you can quickly reduce it by addressing the root of the issue. Chartmogul is free for any company with under $10,000 in MRR, 
And if you have over $10,000 in MRR, you can get a $50 a month credit for 12 months by going to tritmogul.com slash slightbean. A big thanks to the team for sponsoring this video. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you, we'll see you next week.